where do they stack up as far as challenges and faces? Yeah, really good group um, in the Big Ten. I think, you know, Illinois presented some different issues. Obviously, Ohio State's got a, a really good receiving corps, but these guys are really good, too. I recruited uh, Sherrod Bateman a little bit, <coughs> so I'm familiar with him. Uh, but they have, a, they have a good crew. They have a, a guy in, in Bateman that can, uh, you know, a lot of yards after catch and a lot of yards per catch, and, and uh, Johnson can go over the middle. And, uh, you know, they, they, they have a nice complimentary offense, and, and they do a, a nice job of getting those guys in position to make catches. I think the quarterback, what, he came in at halftime against you guys last year and sort of been him since. What? How much did you think about him in the game prep last year and what have you seen from him as a, as a player since then? Uh, we've seen a lot of, I don't, last year I don't know if there was a ton of thought put in. I mean, it was the offense and they had some young quarterbacks rolling through. So we just wanted to defend the offense last year. Uh, he, he's grown a lot, you know, he, he's making good decisions with the football. Uh, we've seen him make some throws that he didn't make last year um, and some mistakes he, some mistakes he made last year and he's not making this year. So I think he's grown as a player. I think he's managing their offense pretty well. I know you're already looking ahead, but what type of growth did you see from your group on Saturday? Oh, I mean, you know, other than the, the drive in the third quarter, you know, it was good to have your back against the wall a little bit and stand up tall and, and hold that thing off. Uh, play four quarters of defense is always good. Keep them out of the end zone uh, for, for a good part of the game is, is good. Uh, getting a turnover when things matter. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a huge play in, in the growth of a, of a team and a defense to, to make a big play when it really matters, not just make one when you're up 43 to 8 or, or whatever. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of growth within the unit and a lot of growth within the team. Scott said um, that the beginning of the third quarter, coming, coming out of the locker room, is sort of a concern or has been this year. Is there anything in particular you can point to about? your side of the ball and, and that sort of the problems that have been early first drive of the third quarter? No, uh, you know, I think obviously the, the, you know, first and foremost, guys aren't, for whatever reason, we've got to address that, we've got to figure it out. For whatever reason, they're not firing all cylinders, they're not ready to go uh, physically. And then mentally, uh, we need to make sure that they understand that something is going to happen in that first drive. They are going to do something different. We don't always know what. Uh, but they're going to do something different, and that probably falls on me uh, to get those guys ready for. We'll make some adjustments. Let's let's get this thing rolling. Uh, but I haven't exactly figured it out yet. How did you like the way your defense adjusted to the quarterback uh, run game on Saturday? The, the the zone read a couple times in that fourth quarter. They it seemed like your guys figured out where they were. Yeah, I don't think they figured it out. I think everybody just did their job after the first drive. Their eyes were where they were supposed to be and their leverage was where they were supposed to be. The first drive was just it was poor eye control, eye violators everywhere, and there was poor leverage out there. Uh, so it wasn't that the guys figured it out. It was just making sure they were dialed in, focus on their assignments, focus on their eyes, focus on techniques. You had a couple younger defensive linemen step up with Khalil out. What do you think of uh, Deontre and Rodgers? Yeah, Deontay played a good game. He had, you know, 20-some snaps. In case Rodgers played only a handful, eight, nine snaps, but he, he did a nice job. You know, he only had one uh, probably quote-unquote mental error I saw, and that was more of a thing that doesn't happen very often. It wasn't like a standard type play. Um, so it was good take to learn from everybody, but they went and operated. You guys practice against young offense, a young offense all the time in your own. Minnesota has a great offense. What, what maybe marks a young offense and how do you guys defend you know, a younger group? Wow, well, I don't really care if they're young or old. They're either good players or they're bad players and they're, it's a good scheme or it's not a good scheme. And I think we have a really good scheme and really good players. I think Minnesota has a really good scheme and really good players. Does, to me, it doesn't matter how old they are. I mean, the, the good thing for those guys in Minnesota is that the offensive line is going to be there for a long time. I mean, they played those kids young. They played the receivers young. They played the quarterback young. Uh, so they're they're going to be a, a good a good football team in this division for a while, uh, but they're they they're like us, you know. They've taken a big step from last year to this year, and probably the year before they have one year up on us as far as a maturity standpoint. So I think they're doing a good job with that group, and it, it'll be a big challenge for us. If Ross mentioned yesterday the four game redshirt rule, you guys discuss that almost every week. There's kind of a strategy that goes into it. Now that you're kind of in year two of that, I feel like that's that's gone. And are there moments when um, Sure, what you're going to do. I think of Jakeem Green last weekend. That kind of example of like how you're going to manage which games these guys play. Sure, there's there's indecision every week. There's um, I don't know if we'll ever know the right answer. 
on some of those things until you know you lose a game and somebody says you should have played that guy or tell everybody well, you guys say we should have played that guy or should have played that guy you'll let us know but um, for the most part you know it, for us right now it's the guys that we want to reserve those red shirts for the, the biggest decisions right now are who's going to help us on special teams and or who's down you know Cam Taylor's down we need another safety to come up now that safety's got to be plugged in at some special team spots. If a linebacker's down, Luke Reimer or, or you know, hopefully Nick Henrich sooner or later is going to be up. He's got to take linebacker reps, but he's got to get plugged into all the special teams reps. So that's kind of the, the, the juggling act that you're juggling right now. Who can fill in? Who can play special teams? If nobody's hurt, who's the best player on special teams for us for what we're doing that week? So I think that that's kind of where we're at right now. And then also there's certain guys where you know you want to get them some game reps so because they are going to be important. Jakeem Green is one of them. He's going to play in four games, and it's coming quickly. I need to pick the games where it's going to be the games that he fits best in what we're doing because he's got to get ready to go for next year, and those game reps are important. You don't get better playing football without playing football. Is there a player that, that would have uh, – prior to this four game rule that you would have burned the red shirt arm that you don't have to burn the red shirt arm, if that makes sense. You're going to play four games instead of playing them the whole season? Oh yeah, I think a lot of these guys, right, right now you what you would have had to have done is you just had to say, you know, Johnny Smith, we're going to play him all the games that he's going to play on every special team. Now you can say, well, Johnny's going to play these four on special teams, and Bobby's going to play these four on special teams. So you can save multiple red shirts instead of burning one guy and saving the others, if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's, that's the decisions that Coach DeWitt's making, Coach Frost is making. Um, okay, how many games do they have left? Who's up, who's down? All those types of things. That, 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 that answer your question? It does. Yeah, yeah I think Cam Taylor-Britt keeps finding new ways to participate on special teams. What have you just seen from his growth now almost seven games going into the seventh game of the season? I think it's kind of standard when you're a good player. Everybody wants to use you. So we want to use him a lot of spots on defense. Coach DeWitt wants to use him a lot of spots on special teams. Um, but I think that's that's normally how it goes. You know, all the good ones we've had, especially the DBs, a la when, when we were at UCF, Mike Hughes, you know, first round corner, he played on every special team, he played on every snap of defense. So um, when you're a really good player, unfortunately, you get played a lot. But he seems to like that. He likes it, so it's good. We've had a couple other young young corners, Braxton and, and Quentin, playing some, and Braxton was in that sort of sub last yep. week. Yeah. How do you think that he's played in that role, and also how does DiCaprio handle covering his spot? Because he did that. Well. Yeah, DiCaprio's uh, first and foremost. DiCaprio can go anywhere too. DiCaprio can go in the slot. He can go at safety. Uh, he knows the whole defense just as good as anybody else, and he's uh, he's a really good player that can play a lot of spots. Braxton is is growing up. He's doing a much better job. He's made some plays this season. He's going to continue to get reps in those sub packages.